will never happen to me. Well, I hope you're right, but chances are at some point in your life you're going to be faced with temptations to do some pretty, some pretty dangerous stuff. And so I'm going to um, allow Mrs. Collins to share her story with us this morning. I also, before I do that, I want to introduce somebody who's also very special to me, and that's Andrew. You can see kind of behind the pool back there. <laughs> Andrew is Mrs. Collins' son, and Andrew was a student of mine um, through high school. He's graduated now and very successful, so we're glad to join us this morning. So without saying anything else, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Collins. Thank you. Well, it's good to be here with you today. You see, I came here today to tell you that I love you. And I know that might sound a little crazy because we don't know each other, but I do. And God loves you too. And because I care about you, I came to warn you about a monster. And I came to tell you a story that just might save your life. This story is about my son, Brian, who's a lot like you. He was born on uh, September 5th, 1991. We all marveled at what a beautiful baby he was. This is him on the day of his baby dedication at church. As, as a toddler, he loved his birthdays at Chuck E. Cheese. Doesn't get cuter than this, right? A little boy with his puppy. He liked to play superhero. He enjoyed all the family vacations. That's him on the right. He even got to go parasailing down in Florida. Every summer, we'd go up to Grandma's house to do a little fishing. He liked to catch the big ones. We invented a new game when we were up there called Catch the baby. Want to see that again? Catch the baby. Okay, but don't try this at home. <laughs> he loves uh, pet birds. This is his pet bird, Rainbow, and Sunny, and a couple of parrots he found to hang out with down in Mexico. He went to Awana. That's a church group every Wednesday night. He did karate for a bit, loved riding his bike. He was in Boy Scouts. This is him here in the front. This night was really cool because his troop got to do the color guard for a Bucks game. So we were down on the floor with the Bucks, and they were like really, really tall. One of his favorite things, of course, is to hang out with, with friends. This is when they were in their long hair stage. That's uh, Brian on the right. Like most kids, the other favorite thing is playing video games. He was a skateboarder for a bit. Very diligent at it. He tried very, very hard to get every trick just perfect. Him and his friends uh, did a little synchronized skateboarding for me one day. <laughs> That's him in the middle. He played bass in a band. That's him on the left. As you can tell, he was a bit of a nut. Uh, he he uh, liked to goof around, kept us laughing. He ran track. Um, in, uh, for Franklin in middle school. It was a real joy to watch him run because he was the fastest kid in his class, so he won most of his races. He also played football for Franklin for a couple of years. Because he was so fast, he was a running back, and it was really thrilling to watch him. He even got a couple of 80-yard touchdowns. He was strong, or I was a lot lighter back then. <laughs> Uh, I was. <laughs> we spent many, many summer days um, <clears throat> out on the boat with his friends wakeboarding and tubing and skiing. He enjoyed the wave runners and the ATV. 
You guys don't know this yet, but this will be one of your happy days, the day you get your driver's license. Not for the parents, but for the kids. <laughs> he was on the rock climbing club for New Berlin West. He worked at Stonefire Pizza, which was great for us because we got to play all the non-ticket games for free. <laughs> In school, his favorite subjects were psychology and astronomy and medical terminology. And the day he graduated from high school, we were so very, very proud. He went to college. His first semester there, he got pretty good grades, all B's and one C. But behind these smiles, there was trouble brewing. In seventh and eighth grade, things took a turn for the worse when he started experimenting with drugs. Just pot. Now they say marijuana is a gateway drug, and that's what happened. He eventually tried many, many other drugs. He got into trouble at school and with the police. There were some um, close calls with overdoses that landed him in the hospitals. He did an intensive outpatient drug treatment program, and things got better for a while. But then the, um, he started doing pills, prescription drugs, like Oxy and Vicodin, and that eventually led him to try heroin. And that was it. Once, and you're done. Heroin takes over your body, and it possesses your mind, and he was now a heroin addict. He had to have it every day. See, drugs change your brain chemistry. You end up needing the drug more than you need even food. With heroin, you have painful withdrawal symptoms just hours after your last fix. And you need more of the drug just to feel normal because it makes you feel so sick. Now, you don't want to be a heroin addict. You feel bad and guilty and shameful every time you shoot up, you cry. The drug makes you very depressed, and the little frustrations of life seem to become insurmountable problems. Your spirit longs to be free of this drug, but your body's trapped, and your mind's all messed up, and you can't see any way out. You feel like there's no hope. You ache to be free of this drug, but you don't know how to stop. That's how Brian felt. He felt like ripping through his skin daily, he was constantly depressed, and all that was after only three months of doing heroin. Then on January 15, 2011, he wanted to be free of this monster so badly that he took his own life. In the note he left, he said, I messed up my life bad with drugs you can't even understand. I love my family, but I can't take life anymore. My son at the age of 19 is now dead because of drugs, and this is what I have left. I won't get to see him graduate from college or start a career or walk down an aisle. I'll never get to hold his children, what would have been my grandchildren. I'll never get to hug him again here on earth. I'll always be a grieving mother. Drugs stole all that from him and from us. And now we're living in the nightmare. And this is a nightmare we don't get to wake up from. You see, what you do affects other people. Your life is intertwined with many, many other lives. When someone in the household is abusing drugs or alcohol, it totally wrecks the household. You're always worrying. You're always stressed. There's always some sort of crisis going on. Drugs bring a horrible chaos and leave a family in turmoil. In our case, drugs left parents devastated. This is the last Mother's Day I'll ever be with all of my children. They left a dad questioning why he doesn't get to see his son anymore. Drugs left a little sister who wails and cries in her bed at night because she wants her brother back. Drugs left two older sisters with big holes in their heart, but missing their brother and their best friend. They left a younger brother who just wants to hang out with his big bro again. They left a grandma who longs to hold her grandson, an aunt 
who can't stop thinking about her nephew. Drugs left many, many friends and family sad and missing him every single minute of every single day. You see, heroin is a killer. It's killing lots of young people right now. When someone tries heroin just once, they usually want it more and more and more. And they keep wanting it, and they become addicted to it. And addiction means that your body now has to have this drug, even though it's not good for your body. But now your body can't function without this drug. A heroin addiction doesn't usually start with heroin. Do you know where it starts? It usually starts with alcohol or marijuana. You see, kids take a few drinks, and that leads to a few more drinks. Then they try other drugs, maybe pot. Then they try other drugs, like cocaine or pills. And then they might try prescription drugs. Now, <coughs> prescription drugs, like your doctor might prescribe these to you, and because you need them. And if you take them as prescribed, it's okay. But what kids will do is they'll start taking prescriptions that don't belong to them, or they'll start taking too much of it, or they'll start taking it too often. And then what happens is you become addicted to these prescriptions. Um, and when someone's uh, abusing pain pills, it only takes about two weeks to become addicted to them. And now their body needs the drug. But that can get expensive because these pills on the street go anywhere from like $40 to $80 for one pill. So then people try heroin because it's cheaper in the beginning. And sometimes it's even easier to get. But that makes them a heroin addict. Heroin is an opiate. Other opiates are prescription drugs, painkillers, like morphine, codeine, oxycontin, oxycodone, dilanin, methadone, Darvacet, Percocet, Vicodin, Suboxone, Hydrocodone, and Fentanyl. These pain medicines or painkillers are in the exact same family as heroin. In fact, they are heroin in a pill form. If you hear these names, you run away. You run far, far away because opiates are very, very dangerous. Abuse of heroin and prescription pain medicines is an epidemic now. The CDC has declared it an epidemic. The leading cause of accidental deaths in our country used to be from car accidents. But now, the leading cause of accidental deaths in our country and in our state is from prescription drug and heroin overdoses. Deaths from heroin have doubled in the past two years. And with heroin and prescription drugs, people die when they take too many of these pills or, or they um, take too much heroin. They die because their body forgets to breathe and they suffocate. And heroin addicts are normal looking kids. Several of Brian's friends from college are in and out of um, rehabs now battling heroin and opiate addiction. I'm here to warn you that it's out there. It's at the colleges, it's at high schools, it's at middle schools, it's at parties. There are drug dealers all over our city in West Dallas, in Waukesha, and in Hills Corners. And dealers love suburban kids because they have money and they don't carry guns. And dealers will actively try to pursue people to get them hooked. Kids are dying from prescription drugs and heroin all over our city and state. This is Sammy from Lake Country. She was bright and talented and an honor student. Her mom said she was known as the kid who didn't do drugs or alcohol all through high school. She was brought up to not use drugs or drink. But Sammy had her wisdom teeth out when she was 18, and the doctor prescribed Oxycontin for her. But she started abusing that prescription, and she got addicted to it. Eventually, she started abusing heroin after battling her addictions for six years. She just lost her battle in January and died of a heroin overdose at the age of 24. This is Courtney. Her mom said she never would have guessed in a million years that Courtney would use drugs. Courtney died of a heroin overdose the very first time she tried it. On the right is CJ from Greenfield. He was an amazing young man who helped countless people 
He fought long and hard against an opiate addiction, but unfortunately he lost his battle in 2012. <coughs> On the left is Tony from Muskego. He was bright, intelligent, loving, a good human being, and a perfect son, according to his parents. He started using uh, pills to deal with his brother's terminal illness. His parents had no idea. He eventually started doing heroin. Um, his brother died in 2010, and sadly, Tony also died in 2013 of a heroin overdose. This is AJ from Franklin. His family and my family are good friends. In seventh and eighth grade, he started using pot too to fit in, and he started using pills. Then a dealer came up to him and said, hey, my car's broken. If you give me a ride, I'll give you some free stuff. And the dealer kept doing that until AJ was hooked. And this is where he ended up, in prison, because of his heroin addiction. And not only that, he's out now, but he's still, he has to battle with this addiction and fight it the rest of his life, because now it's in him. And you have to, it's like uh, when you quit drinking or quit smoking, you can't have just one. So he has to battle this addiction every day. Like we talked, heroin's not the only drug to worry about. Marijuana will wreck your life and wreck your brain. Do you know that one in six kids who start using marijuana in their teens will become addicted to it? Marijuana makes you lazy and unproductive, and it turns your brain to mush. And in a young person, if you start using it when you're young, it affects your thinking and your memory. And it can lead to permanent brain damage if you start marijuana when you're young. It can cause cancer, it can lead to mental illness, and of course it can lead to other drugs. Huffing and even over-the-counter drugs can leave you permanently brain damaged. Molly, or ecstasy, is at music festivals and rave parties and singers and rappers promote it. Molly makes your heart race gives you a temperature of 106 degrees and has caused many deaths lately. Synthetic drugs like fake pot, K2, K3, bath salts, spice, can land you in the hospital or in the grave with just one use. We have a girl at our high school in Franklin who did one hit of a synthetic drug. She said her body went numb, she was flat on the floor, she saw heaven, and she almost died for one hit. There was a guy at a music festival that got one drop of a synthetic drug, drug in his nose. He was on life support that night. It was Saturday. On Tuesday, he was dead from one drop. There was a 15-year-old girl in Whitefish Bay that they found dead on her lawn after a farm party or a pharmacy party. That's where kids are taking handfuls of drugs and putting them in a bowl and they just grab them and swallow them. If you're doing that, you're playing. Russian roulette with your life because you never know what deadly combination of drugs you're going to get. I was driving up to Rhinelander to do one of these talks at the high school there. While I was driving up there, there was a kid in the high school that swallowed four pills, two Adderall and two Oxycontin. He started having seizures. They had to call the ambulance, and he was in intensive care that day. Coke, crack, speed, alcohol can all easily lead to addictions. Alcohol is very addictive, and hear me, alcohol is a drug, and it's one of the worst killers. In Greendale, there was a 22-year-old boy who drowned in his very own pool after him and his friends uh, drank grain alcohol. And by the way, his friends were right there while he was drowning. They were just too drunk to notice. You can die of alcohol poisoning from binge drinking. Binge drinking is when you drink five drinks in about two hours. It actually poisons your body. And of course, there's all the drunk driving accidents that cause deaths and injuries. My daughters have several friends who are dead because they chose to drive drunk. Plus, when you're drinking, you're likely to do things that you wouldn't normally do, like try heroin, or girls can get themselves raped. So just because it's legal, like alcohol, or synthetic drugs, or over-the-counter drugs, or even energy drinks, or just because it's prescribed by a doctor doesn't mean that they're safe. If you don't use them properly, they can kill you. I know a guy at the high school in Franklin 
who landed in the emergency room because he drank too many energy drinks. I'm here to warn you that heroin and crystal meth will hook you immediately, once, and you're done. Once, and you end up being a heroin addict or a meth addict. And like I said, it only takes to about two weeks of abusing pain pills to become addicted to them. Lots of drugs can trap you after just once, especially if you're from a family that has that addictive personality in it, or if there's already addiction problems in your family, if there's already alcoholics or drug addicts. You have to be so, so careful, because addictive tendencies run in families. It's, it's in the genes. If it's in your genes, you are more prone to becoming an addict. My three oldest kids all ended up having problems with alcohol and drugs. One of my daughters said that the first time she drank, she knew she was going to be an alcoholic. But praise God, my two older daughters are now clean and sober. They're um, just celebrating, one just celebrated two years, and the other one uh, is over three years clean and sober. See, nobody plans on becoming an addict. They don't wake up and say, I'm going to become an addict. But sometimes all it takes is once. One drink, one cigarette, one puff, one snort, one pill, one hit, one shot. And maybe if one doesn't get you, maybe it'll be your second time, or your third time, or your fourth time, or your 44th time. See, if you keep drinking and if you keep abusing drugs, you will become an alcoholic or a drug addict. You're gambling with your life when you're gambling with drugs. And once it's got you, it never lets go. Drugs and alcohol don't care if you're from a good family or if you're an athlete or are famous. They don't care how old you are or how much longer you're supposed to live. Drug addiction is a disease and it can strike anyone who's doing drugs. And the younger someone starts abusing drugs or alcohol, the more likely they are to become addicted to it. And alcohol and drugs are involved in half of all attempted suicides. Now, some of you probably are thinking, it can't happen to me, and I'm sure my son thought that too. I'm here to tell you it can. This is a picture of Brian in front of his middle school. He's your age here. Look how young and innocent he looks. This is also the time he started experimenting with drug drugs. Started doing pot just to have fun, just to be cool. He didn't realize where pot would lead because I'm sure if he knew that it was going to lead to his death, he never would have did it in the first place. Look at him in football. He could have been a football star. But drugs changed him. Because of drugs, he no longer wanted to play football. Here Brian's graduating from high school. He had the whole world in front of him. And he had his whole life ahead of him. The picture on the left was taken at his graduation party seven months before his death. The picture on the right was taken two weeks before his death, after doing heroin for three months. Can you see how it changed him? In seventh grade, Brian made an autobiography book, and at the end of that book, was a page that showed his goals in life. His goals were to go to college, to get straight A's, to get a nice first car, to get a big nice house, to get married, have kids, to become rich, to get an A on the book, to become a pro skater, to own his own business, to keep going to church when he was older, and to move out west. These were his goals when he was your age. And this is what drugs stole from him and from us. You see, there's a war going on for your soul. And drugs are just some of the weapons that Satan uses. There's other weapons out there that the devil uses, like depression, overeating, over anything, telling you to be a cutter, or making you feel unpopular, or unloved, or hopeless, or telling you that sex will make you feel loved, or that pornography is okay. And then there's the lies that the devil whispers in your ear. Things like, you're no good. Oh, everyone's doing it. Have just one. It'll feel so good. You're so depressed. You may as well end it all. You see, these certainly are not thoughts from God. 
And when you're doing drugs or alcohol, you are no longer in control of your mind. You are giving the devil permission to take over your mind and to fill it with unhealthy thoughts. The Bible says that the devil is a liar and a thief. John, John, or John 10, 10 says the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. John 8, 44 says he was a murderer from the beginning. He is a liar and the father of lies. See, the devil wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy Christians, and he wants to destroy Christian families. And he will use drugs and other evils to do that. And don't think you're immune because you're a Christian. That's why you need to be aware of the devil and his tactics, because he is our enemy. In 1 Peter 5, it says, be controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You need to resist him, standing firm in the faith. You need to stand in Jesus. See, the devil wants to destroy you, but God, oh how he loves you. He made you special and unique, and he loves you so much, and he has a plan and a purpose for you and for your life. He has great plans for you. You have so much to live for and so much potential and so much to do. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And not only that, he has things for you to do. In Ephesians 2, 10, it says, For we are God's workmanship. We are God's home. And he created us in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That is love, and in God there is hope. And Jesus already won the victory when Jesus beat the devil when he died on the cross. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can be yours. He can help you with whatever problems you're having. You just have to ask him. He is ready and waiting to have a relationship with you. See, he created you to walk with him and to talk with him. He created this world and this universe for you to enjoy. And he created a most beautiful place called heaven. Why? Because he wants to spend eternity with you. Heaven, a place of streets of gold, gold so pure you can see through it like a window. With God and Jesus himself there, with the river of life flowing from the throne of God, and the trees of life, and rainbows, and peace, and joy, and love, and light. God, God's glory is shining in heaven. There's not even a need for a sun or moon or stars there, because God himself is there. And in heaven, there's going to be no tears, no pain, no sickness, no sin, and no death. And he made this place for you because he wants to live with you for all eternity there. But we have a problem called sin. We're all sinners. Romans 3.23 says that. If you've ever broken a law or a commandment, you're a sinner. If you ever told a little white lie, you're a liar and a sinner. If you ever took something that didn't belong to you or cheated on a test, you're a thief and a sinner. And we are all sinners. And God, being perfect and holy and just, he can't overlook our sin. There's a price to pay. In Romans 6.23, it says that the wages of sin is death. That means that death is separation. So that means when our body dies, we will be separated from our body, and we will also be separated from God, because we cannot be by God in heaven in our sin state. God requires a punishment for our sin. And that is a problem because we always said God loves you so much and he wants to spend eternity with you. So God had the solution. He had the plan. His plan was to send Jesus down here for us. And Jesus left glorious heaven and came here as a humble little baby and grew up and never sinned. And when he was about 33 years old, he sacrificed himself for us. He died on a cross. And when he was on that cross, he was paying the price for every sin you ever did or will do. He was paying the price. He died the death 
that we deserve. And he took our punishment. But he didn't stay dead, right? Three days later, he rose from the grave. And he's alive right now. And because he lives, we can live also. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he forgives your sin. He comes into your life. And he gives you eternal life. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way. And Jesus came to give you life and eternal life. But he doesn't want you to just have a plain old normal life. He wants you to have an abundant life, a full life, a radical and an extreme life, a way above normal life. See, if you give him your life, he will give you abundant life. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. See, God is the only one that can fill the emptiness that you feel. Other things, alcohol, drugs, sex, video games, friends, they will never be able to fully satisfy you. God is the only one that can fill the hole in your heart. Only in him can you find true hope and true strength and true power and true love. I'm standing here today in the pain of losing my son and can share this story with you only because of God's power working in me, giving me strength and hope. My God is big enough. He is big enough to get me through this nightmare. He is big enough to get you through your nightmares. He can make you strong enough to stand against the temptations of the world. Jeremiah 32 says, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Not only that, he says, I have made you, and I will carry you. I will sustain you, and I will rescue you. Our source, our hope, our strength is Jesus Christ. Now, I told you I was here because I love you and I care about you, and I hope you believe me now. I also hope that you will learn from my son's death. Please, if you've never tried drugs or alcohol, don't. It's not worth it. Once, and you could be done. If you've tried drugs or alcohol or are doing them occasionally, please stop. Sorry. Um, if you think that only once in a while isn't a problem, Think again. It is a problem. Because once you give in to that temptation, it becomes easier and easier to keep doing it. If you give the devil a foothold, you can be sure he's going to take more. <coughs> See, if you're messing with drugs and alcohol, do you know that you are messing with evil and the devil himself? In the Bible, in Galatians 5.20, it says don't do witchcraft. If you go back to the Greek meaning of that word, the Greek meaning of the word witchcraft is pharmakia, where we get our word pharmacy from, where we get our word drugs. So according to God, doing drugs and alcohol is equated to practicing witchcraft. And as a Christian, I sure wouldn't want to be messing with that. So if you're doing drugs or alcohol now, please stop. Because before you know it, they'll possess your mind and your body, and you'll be trapped. If any of you are already trapped by drugs or alcohol, or if you're feeling depressed or suicidal, please get help. Know that there's hope. There's places and people out there that can help you. If you feel hopeless, you tell somebody, please tell a pastor or one of your leaders or a teacher or a counselor or a parent or me. And by the way, remember, your parents are never the enemy. The devil is your enemy. So if you're in danger, please tell somebody immediately because tomorrow could be too late. And if you have a friend who you know who is either suicidal or doing drugs, please tell somebody. Because if you care about that friend by telling, you could be saving their life. And if you ever hear someone say that they want to kill themselves, take that seriously. Because they probably mean it and tell an adult right away. So please, if you have a problem or know someone who does, don't keep it a secret. Don't keep it hidden and in the dark. That's what Satan wants. He wants to keep you trapped. You bring it to the light. Because God says, the truth will set you free. My son Brian kept it hidden. We didn't know he was doing heroin. We didn't know he was depressed. If only he had told us, perhaps we could have helped him. 
and he'd still be here today. Do you remember the story where uh, Peter was in the boat and he saw Jesus come walking to him? Uh, he was walking on the water towards the boat, and Peter's like, Oh, let me come, come to you, Jesus. And Peter jumped out of the boat and started walking on the water. Well, what happened? Peter took his eyes off Jesus. He started looking at what was going on around him, and he fell into the water. See, Brian loved God, but he took his eyes off Jesus, and he left the door open for bad things to start tempting him. He fell into sin. He started to walk down a path that didn't honor God. He made some poor choices. Now, God was still with him, but Brian had a hard time following God because of the sin that had now trapped him. You see, there are consequences to sin. And unfortunately, the path that Brian was on led to destruction and death. We've already been introduced to my son, Andrew. I'd like to show you a different path. Andrew graduated from Franklin in 2013, and he's at college at WCTC and doing an apprenticeship, and we're so proud of him. He's a really nice guy, and he has so much going for him. He made a choice to follow Jesus. He made a commitment to God when he was in high school. He made a choice to stay away from drugs and alcohol. And God has helped him to stand strong against temptations. Now, it hasn't been always easy for him. And he even got made fun of at school because of these choices. But he has his God to rely on. And he has his God who fulfills them. And it can be done. Your life is important to me. Please, please think about what you're doing. Make good choices so that you can live a life free of drugs and alcohol abuse. I'd like to challenge you today, challenge you first, to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior if you've never done this. Just call out to him and ask him to save you. Secondly, I'd like to challenge you to commit to following Jesus. Purpose in your hearts right now to stay on the right path, to keep your eyes on Jesus. If you want an abundant life with the Lord, you've got to keep your eyes on him. How can you do that practically? Getting his word. The Bible is what combats the lies of Satan. When Satan tells you a lie, the truth is in the Bible. Hang out with friends who build you up in the Lord. Fellowship with Christians. Go to church. Talk to God in prayer. Listen to Christian music. That chases the devil away. The devil don't like that music. He'll go away. And it'll help you if you're having a bad day. Listen to Christian music. You'll feel better. Get to know God and grow in your relationship with Jesus. And finally, I'd like to challenge you to confess your sins and struggles. Big or little, anything that's a problem in your life, drugs, alcohol, cutting, depression, suicidal thoughts, stealing, lying, anything that's holding you back, confess it to God. Because Jesus loves you no matter what. You can go to him with your problems. And I'd also like you to, to encourage you to confess your sins out loud to someone else. Get it out in the open. Satan wants it hidden. But you can confess it to, to the leaders here that love you, or to a parent, or a teacher, or um, a pastor. Admitting you have a problem is going to be your first step to freedom. And, and if you do have a problem, there's lots of people here I know that, would, that love you and would help you to get help. I'm going to give you a minute just to talk to the Lord or to think about what you might need to do. Maybe you need to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Maybe you want to commit a purpose in your heart to follow him. Or maybe you need to confess some things. Let's just take a minute right now, each of you, to talk to the Lord. Thank you, Father, for this, the decisions made here today. I pray for each heart here that you would remind them of these decisions. I ask that you would help these precious ones of yours to stay away from drugs and alcohol. 
and the other temptations in this world. I also pray, Father, that you give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they may know you better. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, your, your leaders have set it up for you guys to get some bracelets. I have silicon bracelets that you're going to be able to take over here in different colors. They say on them, be aware and beware, drugs destroy. And on the inside of the bracelet, it's embossed in memory of Brian. So I would, I'd like you to take one of these to help, uh, help you remember Brian's story and to help keep you safe. Here, um, I've also got pictures up there of Brian you can take. Some of them have a little story on the back. It's his story. And any of you adults, I have some cards up there that have seven tips for parents and warning signs to watch for um, that your kid, kids might be doing drugs. And now, I'd just like to ask you to do one thing for me and my family. Please remember my son. His name? Brian James Davis. And he would want you to live strong, live long, and live free from drugs and alcohol. Thank you, and God bless you all.